Are you ready for it? Today I'm going to make the banana sponge cake with the Nutella Swiss meringue buttercream. That without shines its glutinous cousins and will fool everybody to think it's the real deal. I mean, what's not to love about this combination? Banana and Nutella. Except for one of my friends who I love very dearly, but she told me recently she doesn't like Nutella and she doesn't like buttercream. I'm, I'm still coping with that. Is, is that actually a possibility of, of, of someone not liking those two? And it might be better. I can have more cake for myself. Yeah. The nice thing about this recipe is that you can make it dairy free. You just substitute the butter with a dairy-free substitute. Just make sure to pick the right dairy substitute because the thing with buttercream is it needs to get stiff and the stiff part comes really from the cold butter. The thing is what I have found is if you use margarine or any of the spreadable vegetable spreads is that they are too soft even in the fridge and if you use that instead of a nice dairy substitute which is used for baking then the buttercream will just collapse. So just make sure if you go with the dairy free solution is get the right dairy substitute. To get started you're going to make the banana sponge cake and the recipe for that is in next week's episode or you can check on my website for the recipe. When the cake is in the oven that's when you start making your Swiss meringue buttercream and I'm going to show you how you're going to go about it. So I want to try out how to make a Swiss meringue Nutella buttercream. What is the difference between a buttercream and a Swiss meringue buttercream is that Swiss meringue normally uses stiffened egg whites, which makes it a much fluffier and lighter buttercream. Now, why I'm choosing to make a much more complicated buttercream is because I'm using a sponge cake, a banana sponge cake, which is very fluffy and light. When you have it too heavy of a buttercream, it just tastes funny. It's like this really soft, squishy thing and this heavy buttercream, and that mixture is just not appealing to me. So the Swiss meringue is a pain to make. Well, not if you have the right tools, but if you don't have the right tools, it's pretty complex. Not because of the process itself, but you need pasteurized egg whites, or most people would prefer if you have pasteurized egg whites, because certainly the fear of salmonella and other kind of bacteria being in the undercooked egg. If you want to pasteurize eggs at home, you can totally do it, and I have done it, but it's pretty complicated. So how you pasteurize eggs at home is in a sous vide machine where you can keep the water at a steady 160 to 170 degree Fahrenheit. The other way is you bring water to 170 degrees, put the eggs in it and make sure you keep the water for five minutes on the stove at 170 degrees. But it's a lot of work to keep the temperature steady. If you get the water too hot, like at 180 or 190, you kind of starting to cook the egg whites and then you won't have you don't have pasteurized eggs and these more, so you don't have usable egg whites. So I found recently a recipe from Sally, where she actually combines sugar and the egg whites over hot water bath, gets it there to 170 degrees to make sure that all the bacteria are dead, and then starts the process of the Swiss meringue. So I'm gonna try that and see how that's gonna turn out for me. I'm starting to make my Swiss meringue buttercream with separating six eggs. In case you're wondering how I'm separating the egg whites from the egg yolk, there are a lot of different methods and I'm going over it, how I do it in my chocolate sponge cake. So I'm just gonna add one cup or 200 grams of sugar. So Sally talks in her recipe about getting the egg whites and the sugar up to 160, 170 degree Fahrenheit and to measure it with a thermometer. She also talks about mixing it while it is on the top of the hot water bath and I'm going to use for that my regular beaters. So the water is now almost to a boiling point, or at least it starts to steam up. And I'm going to put now my egg whites and the sugar on the top of it. So my egg whites did reach now 160 degree Fahrenheit and it should be pasteurized. I do think Sally's trick of beating the egg whites and the sugar over a hot water bath is very cool. I'm linking to her website below in my description. Now I do have to lower the temperature of the egg whites and the sugar before I can start adding the butter. To lower the temperature, I'm going to transfer the egg whites into my stand mixer and keep on whisking the egg whites until it cools down. Now I want to get the butter ready though. And if you have any dairy issues, you can certainly use a vegan substitute instead. And I'm going to cut about 500 grams of butter. So I'm going to add now 100 grams of Nutella to my egg whites and my sugar. 
before I'm gonna add my butter. Or maybe I'm gonna add 150 grams. And if I think it doesn't taste Nutella enough, I'm gonna add even more. I'm gonna add the Nutella to my egg whites and keep on mixing it until both of them are well blended. Let's try if I need to add anything. This is good. I'm gonna add a little bit more Nutella to it. And one tablespoon of vanilla. And I'm gonna continue whisking the buttercream just to make sure all the ingredients are well combined. This is really good. Very dangerous as well. So the banana cake is done and I flipped it out of the baking form and it has to cool down now, probably for an hour or two before I can actually add the filling to it. In the meantime, I'm gonna transfer the Nutella buttercream into this container and put it in the fridge to make sure it keeps well. Okay, off you go into the fridge. So I'm ready to assemble my banana Nutella cake. And the first thing I have to do for that is I have to cut the different cake layers. I'm gonna like to do that with a sharp chef's knife and this one is not too sharp, unfortunately. And the first thing I normally do is I score the layer and then I'm gonna put my knife in to separate it. And here's your first layer. Now I'm gonna score the second layer and now I'm cutting my third layer. Here are my different cake layers. What happened here is that um, I didn't have enough space on the top of my, my baking shelf, so I cut off the top of my cake by accident. And I'm gonna use this layer as my bottom layer. I have four cake layers and I need to make sure I have enough buttercream for each layer. So two scoops seems to be about right. I spread it as evenly as possible to make sure I have enough Nutella buttercream. Normally I like to get the buttercream to get to room temperature, then it's much more easier to spread. Again, I'm gonna try to level the cake as much as possible. I'm gonna add the second cake layer, add more buttercream, add the third cake layer, add even more buttercream, and then the final top. So now I'm gonna see if there are any gaps, just that it looks prettier. And I wanted to have like a fancy pattern, so I decided to do some rosettes on the top of the cake. Okay, <clears throat> almost done with the piping. And for decoration, I'm gonna add some cacao powder. And here's my new cake creation, the banana Nutella sponge cake. The moment of truth. I started with an idea of thinking about how would Nutella and banana taste together as a cream cake. Now the different ingredients are pretty tasty, but how will they taste together? I got a result, I got a cake, let's taste though how good it is. Okay, it fell over. Oh yeah, that flavor combination is definitely nice. So it's this perfect flavor blend of a very soft banana sponge cake combined with this elegant Nutella buttercream, which is rich, at the same time light, since we use the Swiss meringue buttercream. It's good stuff. So my experiment was pretty successful. I'm pretty happy with this. And I added the recipe to my website, and the link to my website is below in the description. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And I'll see you next week, where I'm going to show you how I'm actually going to make the banana sponge cake.